Good evening. I'd like to call to order this uh, meeting of the uh, Select Board, Board of Health on June 22nd, 2021. Uh, the time is now 6 p.m. Meetings normally held at the municipal offices are being held remotely with adequate and alternate means of public access and where required public participation provided in accordance with the governor's March 12th, 2020 order, suspending certain provisions of the open meeting law, Mass General Law, Chapter 30A, Section 20. Meetings are typically broadcast on the FCAT and remote meeting connections are noted. Uh, the dial-in is 312-626-6799. Meeting ID is 911-604-1580. And the passcode is 570012. Uh, if you uh, want to be on Zoom, you can access the Town of Deerfield website and click on tonight's meeting. And they'll come up with the agenda and you just can click on the Zoom. Okay. Um, Seen Barb is here. I am. Well, you want to get started, yeah. or you want to sure. wait fifteen minutes? <laughs> oh yeah, no, I'm happy to go now. <laughs> um, I'm before you to discuss our uh, loan documents for the wastewater treatment plant. Last year, we borrowed for the clarifier nine hundred thousand, and for uh, phase one, our first borrowing was eight hundred and fifty-two thousand dollars. So. Next week, we owe a million seven five zero. <laughs> so um, we have loan documents um, to execute to renew the 852 on the phase one, plus what we anticipate based on the engineer's um, cost plan through June of next year. Um, so we will be paying off the clarifier um, and then we refinanced for 30 days because um, we needed the town meeting to endorse the, the amount in the budget. So I took it out for 30 days for $554,454, but that will be paid um, in 30 days, whatever, that, 729. So, so what was our interest rate, Barbara, now? Um, well, we'll have two different loans yeah. going on. So the... Um, the clarifier that we have for 30 days is 0.38, which was great. Um, yeah. Short, very short term note. So it'll be in and out before we know it. I'll be back here next month. <laughs> okay. Um, but the um, phase one uh, of the sewer project, we, we already executed the clarifier documents a couple of weeks ago. So I was just figuring out a way to explain that. So we've already executed this 500 and um, whatever, $54,000 loan. So we've already done those pap that paperwork. Tonight, we're just talking about the next borrowing for the wastewater treatment plant phase one. Um, so- Which is a 1.5- uh, 1.5% interest rate. Um, we ended up getting a premium of um, 116,000, I believe, 116,501. So it's, um, uh, kind of like a, a net reduction, if you will, because we're yeah. getting cash back, kind of cash back at a closing Point type thing. Zero. So we can pay our um, borrowing costs, which are almost 29,000. And then we'll have a little left that we can pay towards the loan. Or if we, you know, the costs go over before we get our next loan executed. Um, anyway, it can be rolled back over to, to pay down the loan. Okay. So I was gonna, uh... This is pretty lengthy, but it read, is. I'm gonna, I'm gonna read this because it's you know right nine million three hundred and fifty thousand. We are borrowing nine million three hundred and fifty thousand dollars. Yes. Uh, uh, so I'm not sure if we figured out who the clerk is, but I'll just read this as if I'm the clerk. You are the clerk. <laughs> oh, there we go. Oh, I was last year. <laughs> okay, so it's my turn. So I, the clerk of the select board of the town of Deerfield, Massachusetts, certify that at a meeting of the board held on June 22nd, 2021, of which meeting uh, all members of the board were duly notified and at uh, which a quorum was present. The following, the following votes were unanimously passed, all of which appear on the official record of the board in my custody, uh, voted to approve the sale of a 
$9,350,000 general obligation bond anticipation notes, unlimited tax, um, the notes of the town dated June 29th, 2021 and payable June 8th, 2022 to Piper Sandler and Company at par and accrued interest plus a premium of $116,501. Further voted that in connection uh, with a marketed of sale of the notes, uh, the preparation and distribution of a sale uh, of a notice of sale and preliminary official statement dated June 9th, 2021, and the final official statement dated June 16th, 2021, each uh, in such forms as may be approved by the town treasurer, be and hereby are ratified, confirmed, approved, and adopted. Further voted that the town treasurer and the select board be and hereby are authorized to execute and deliver a, sig uh, a significant events disclosure undertaking in compliance with uh, SEC rule 15C2-12 in such form as may be approved by bond council to, town, to the town, which undertaking shall be incorporated by reference in the notes for the benefit of all holders of the notes from time to time further voted that we authorize uh, and direct the town treasurer to establish post uh, issuance federal tax compliance procedures and continuing disclosure procedures in such forms as the town treasurer and the bond council deem sufficient, or if such procedures are currently in place to review and update said procedures in order to monitor and maintain the tax exempt status of the notes and to comply with the relevant securities laws. Further voted that any certificates and or documents related to the notes collectively, the documents may be executed in several counterparts at which um, each of which shall be regarded as an original and all of which shall constitute one in the same document delivery of an executed counterpart of a signature page to a document by electronic mail in a PDF file or by uh, or by other electronic transmission shall be um, effective as delivery of a manually executed counterpart signature page to such document and electronic signatures on any of the documents shall be deemed original signatures for the purposes of the documents and all matters relating thereto, having the same legal effect as original signatures. Further voted that each, uh, so each member of the select board, the town clerk and the town treasurer B are here and, and hereby are authorized to take any and all such actions and execute and deliver such uh, certificates, receipts, or other documents as may be uh, as may be determined by them or any of them uh, to be necessary or convenient to carry into effect the provisions of the foregoing votes. I further certify that the votes were taken at a meeting open to the public. Uh, that no, no, uh, no vote was taken by secret ballot, that a notice stating the place, time, the place, date, and time, and agenda for the meeting, which agenda included the adoption of the above votes, was filed with the town clerk and a copy thereof posted in a manner con uh, conspicuously visible for see to the public at um, all hours in or on the municipal building at the office of the town clerk is located or uh, if applicable in accordance with an alternative method of notice prescribed or approved by the attorney general as set forth in 940 CMR 29.032B, uh, at least 48 hours, not including Saturdays, Sundays, or legal holidays prior to the time of the meeting and remain so posted at the, at the time of the meeting that no session, uh, see that no deliberations or decision in connection with the sale of the notes were taken in executive session, all in accordance with general laws, chapter 30A, section 18 through 25, as amended, further suspended, supplemented or modified by executive order of the governor of the Commonwealth of Massachusetts, suspending certain provisions of the open meeting law, chapter 30A, section, uh, section 20, dated March 12, 2020. Um, and this is dated June 22nd, 2021. And I'll sign this, but I would first make a motion to approve the $9,350,000 bond. Trevor, 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 yes. speak into the microphone, please. Oh, sorry. 
It's okay. Uh, I thought the other mic would pick me up better. So I'll make a motion to approve the $9,350,000 uh, uh, bond anticipation note for a rate of 1.5% uh, interest maturing date, June 8th, 2020, uh, 2022. Um, I second that. Any further discussion on it? No. All those in favor? I, Trevor McDaniel. I, Carolyn Ness. I, Dave Wolfson. So we have some stuff to sign. So we will sign this. Um, uh, I will sign that. We have the tax to sign. And uh, this is the special significant events disclosure certificate that I mentioned in that. And this is to, if there was a major, something happened in town or, you know, uh, Barb was no longer here or we had a catastrophic catastrophic event we have notified people of what, what was happening mm -hmm. well yeah. hopefully no uh, I can we get these to you tomorrow or do you need them tonight Neither tonight. okay <laughs> Trevor, just remember to speak right into the mic because even if you go a little bit to the right, it's, you can't hear you. We can't hear you. That's the only one. Yeah. Yeah. That one's only one signature there. Oh, these have two. Okay. Everything has two. So we got you one here. We just need your one. Oh, okay. mm -hmm. here. This one's down. Yeah. Down. Okay. yeah. I just needed one. Yeah. And then try to need. Do you need this one? Oh, oh, okay. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you for reading all that. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Thank you, Barbara, for getting excellent rates for us. Thank you. What one did you sign? Oh, do you? I'll check. Correct it, I think. Okay, you got one more. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Buying a house in the shape of a sewer system. I know. Well, it's a big house. <laughs> So I think you're one of those, or did David do it twice? David did it twice. <laughs> I did it twice. On that one. Oh, so. <laughs> you want to fix that? And... Um, <laughs> Kimberly, I see you. Um, I see you on the Zoom. Um, Sorry. Okay. Thank no. you so much. Thank you, sure. yep. thank you, Barbara. Okay. Have a good evening. Yes. Thank you. Okay. Next thing on the agenda is uh, the FERCOG grant match letter. Um. Kimberly, uh, we got your letter um, in, 
and it's in the packet. Did anybody have a question? No. Okay. You want to explain it? Or? This is um, the Creating Resilient Communities group that we established in December of two, 2011 after Irene. The whole purpose of the group is a work group from the Franklin Conservation District, which I chair, um, was to um, categorize and list all activities in the Deerfield watershed so that municipals, uh, municipalities and different um, groups could use matches, um, know what work was being done and could use the match um, towards uh, their work. And so Kimberly is requesting um, that the $7,000 that we spent on the green development standards um, watershed work um, be used as a match towards the Shelburne, Berniston and Greenfield's um, uh, non-point source pollution grant uh, 319 on the Deerfield River. So Kimberly, is there um, anything else you wanna explain about it? Um, sure, I would uh, just like to say that um, as Carolyn mentioned, you know, we're, this group, we're always looking for ways to help each other out and to leverage work that's already um, ongoing in the Deerfield River watershed. And it's so hard for um, these grant applications to be successful when, you know, a, this one in particular requires a 40% match and much of the work that we will be doing, I'm hope, you know, we will absolutely share with the town of Deerfield and um, hope that it will be useful. I wanted to just quickly point out an example of how the COG, um, when I'm writing grant applications for work in the region, oftentimes, there are things that are done for communities um, without having them uh, you know, provide a match. And a recent example of that is the Franklin County Sustainable Stormwater Management Plan where the COG was able to provide the town of Deerfield with two conceptual um, designs for stormwater management pro projects. And I think Helena Farrell came before the board not too long ago, maybe a month or so ago to present those. Um, so those are, you know, something that was made available to the town and the match for that grant, you know, I was able to assemble without coming um, to the towns that participated. So, you know, it's, um, anyway, it's, it's, a, it's an ask um, that I, you know, we would really appreciate uh, if it's possible, and I am happy to share the work uh, that we do as part of the grant uh, with Deerfield. Frankly, you guys are ahead of the curve in many ways, and so we learn um, from what you're doing, and um, we appreciate that. Thank you. Okay. I make a motion that we support um, the letter, send a letter of support and allow them to use our $7,000 towards the match, 40% match. I'll second that motion. Okay. Any further discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor? Aye, Trevor McDaniel. Aye, Carolyn Ness. Aye, Dave Wolfram. Thank you very, very much. And your um, neighbors in uh, Shelburne, Greenfield, and Bernardston uh, also thank you as well. Thank you for your work, Kimberly. Thank, thank you, Kimberly. Good night. Good night. Good night. Okay, the next thing on the agenda is the Procock Community Health Program. Carolyn, you want to? Um, I don't know. Is Phoebe on? I'll be right back. I don't know. I don't think it's a okay. Wasn't I, gonna, I would. What? She wasn't going to be on unless we sent her comment, so I'm not sure. I, uh, well, I don't feel that $4,800 is enough rental credit for the space. And um, if you add it to our $22,000 public health nurse budget, that's $26,800. And for four hours a week, potentially up to eight hours a week, um, I don't feel like that's enough um, credit. 
And I also have a problem with the contract. This has been a struggle through the pandemic. I feel like um, the nursing contract should say emergency planning um, response as well as emergency response. Uh, it should include emergency response. We need a public health nurse in an emergency and um, it was a struggle to get that to happen. So I guess to, to recap for the audience, um, Phoebe was here um, last meeting and kind of answering questions. And we had, we'd asked that um, it wasn't specifically in the contract that the credit that we're getting, or we didn't know if we were getting it and how much that credit was for the space that FERCOG uses. Um, they rent, they use an office here to see residents uh, in the town for, for our nursing program. We wanted to make sure that that was um, being accounted for. And I think we've all learned a lot over the last year or so dealing with COVID and the response. And uh, they've been great in many, many ways. And we've also struggled in other ways. So I guess this is just kind of hashing out the contract, uh, which is, needs to be signed, I think, before the end of the month. Um, in the contract, it does renew automatically renew for a year. So yeah. I don't feel like I think it's an arbitrary date to say okay. that we have to sign by June 30th. I think we can negotiate further. All right. okay. Sounds good to me. Yeah. My reading of it, I think the max that we should extend it would be a year anyways. Yeah. Um, so. It's not that we have any issues whatsoever with Lisa White. The reason we joined the um, health district was so we could continue working with Lisa because Lisa was our in, uh, nurse to begin with. Mm -hmm. But um, in the, in the original joining of the health district, we had eight hours a week and um, there was you know, a handful of towns. There are now 16 towns that share Lisa. And you know, I feel like we're being excessively charged. Well, we, have, we do have a meeting. We sit on the um, council because we're a member um, that governs this program. Um, and we have a hearing or a meeting, regular monthly meeting coming up Thursday. So I guess, you know, certainly we'll both attend. What, uh, yes, I, I will attend. My, my um, goal is to get credit for um, not receiving uh, services for the six months when Lisa was up, appointed, um, you know, vaccine manager mm -hmm. for the county. And that's being reimbursed by, um, you know, the insurance that FERCOG collected. Um, and uh, even though they haven't finished, you know, that money hasn't come from the insurance company yet, I feel like they could give us a credit and that would give us enough of an incentive that we could use that money towards a social worker. Um, we have potential with um, Community Health Center to use a, a social worker for the SIG grant at the senior center for 12 hours. And I would like five or six hours a week for Deerfield residents as a resource coordinator, as well as someone that um, people could talk to. So um, that money, the difference that they are collecting, they you know did over 10,000 shots. They collected, you know, will be collecting $45 a shot. That's $450,000. And they certainly could pay Lisa out of that since she was available to the whole county and not, and not charge us when we, no seniors were able to see her for mm -hmm. January through pretty much this year. So that would give us enough money that would give, allow a community health service um, group to figure out how to bill, um, what the need is in the community, how to bill the medical code so that we could have it be a sustainable program for the town of Deerfield. And it would put us in a better position for next year when we go to reapply for the SIG grant uh, for the seniors. Um, and it gives them a more robust, qualified, certified person to do their outreach. And um, it, it will make us in a better position, like I said. We'll leverage much more money. So we'll make a motion to table this um, until next meeting. I'll second that. Any further discussion? No. All those in favor? Aye. Trevor McDaniel? Aye, Carolyn Ness. Aye, Dave Wolfram. Okay, uh, we don't have any minutes. Uh, so, selectman reports, announcements? Well, I just wanted to hit on a, um, at least, I don't know if this is the item. Uh, oh, no, we've got this down under 
unanticipated. So I can I can address that then. I'll just give a, a little bit of an update on the sewer. That's all I talk about. Yeah. But uh, yeah. but we uh, work has started, and um, you know we're starting our weekly updates on the project. So you know the week of the June fourteenth, they they you know got on site, put up nine hundred feet of silt fence and erosion control stuff and silt socks at the catch basins and um, stripped and stockpiled the topsoil. And then uh, next week they plan to begin excavating for the foundation for the headworks building um, and to adjust the drainage lines to accommodate the proposed work and relocate existing fences and stuff. So it's exciting to see the work starting. It's been a long, long time coming. So I'll, you know, we'll get these weekly and every time we meet. I'll just give an update to people on what's happening and you can follow it there. Thank you, Trevor. Okay. Mm -hmm. Carol? Um, I just wanted to say, uh, if we're going down to the Board of Health, that we, again, another week with no cases in Deerfield. And uh, it's very exciting. The Delta variant, which is the old India variant, um, is pushing out the Alpha variant, which was the UK variant. And so, it is a more transmissible and it is more virulent, mm -hmm. which for younger people in their 20s and 30s, 40s. Um, so, but the good news is the vaccine is very effective. It seems to be effective against this. And um, if, but we need to remain careful because our, our most vulnerable population now is our younger kids under 12. It doesn't look like we're gonna be able to get uh, Pfizer through um, trials before school starts, but it will be sometime in the early fall. So it looks like I just was on a DPH call today. Um, it looks like we're going to have the same kind of um, uh, operation that we had in the spring at the schools. The schools will be open. We will work with the schools and hopefully um, people will be safe. And uh, with the doors open and you know, kids being masked and being careful. Um, we were very successful this past year. I don't see any reason why we wouldn't be successful in the fall. We just have to be careful of this variant. It is of concern. Absolutely. Okay. That's anything else? Okay. Nope. Okay, uh, move on to just go um, 2022 appointments. Okay, um, before we start, if at any point in time that an individual's name is brought up, a performance or personality, I will suspend public comment, which is my authority as the chair. Because the, if an employee is uh, mentioned in any way, they have the right to be here to offset that conversation. So, and I have consulted with our attorneys that I can suspend public comment at any point in time because I have to protect the town of Deerfield. And right now, after our last meeting, we've sort of opened the door for litigation a little bit already. So we've got to be careful. Okay. So I'm going to make a motion for the uh, police department appointments. Yes, please. Okay. So I'll, I'll re read our names. Uh, this, and I'll first read a note that uh, Chief Zurich, um sent us for annual appointments dated June 16, 2021. Uh, dear Honorable Board, the following is a list of recommended appointments with current pay rates effective July 1st, 2021. I am requesting part time personnel be appointed from July 1st, 2021 through June 30th, 2022. So full-time officers, John Pichur, Jr., Chief, um, indefinite, uh, 4222 per contract. Adam Sokolowski, uh, Detective Sergeant, 3088, uh, Step 3. Brian Ravish, uh, Sergeant, 3088, Step 3. Jennifer Bartek, Sergeant, 3088, Step 3. Uh, Mark Pachulski, Officer, 2820, Step 8. Uh, Marissa Smith, 2502 step three, Timothy Bowen, 2502 step three, Matthew uh, Bader, 2439 step two, Matthew Wanzik, 2439 step two, Nathan Walker, officer, 
2376, step one. Um, and Matthew Wansnick will be the, uh, most of that list, they're all indefinite appointees. Matthew Wansnick will be for the term of 2022. Nathan Walker will be the term of 2022. The following will all be term 2022. Special officers, Deborah Austin, matron, uh, administrative assistant, 2860, step nine. Harry Ruddick, part-time sergeant, $29. Robert uh, Warger, officer, $23. Joseph Michalski, the third, officer, $23. Gary S. Sevilla, officer, court officer, $23. Jesse Ronsnick, officer, $23. Mark Wilkins, officer, $23. Robert Thrasher, officer, $23. Mark Jux, officer, $23. Brandon Bryant, officer, $21. Ethan Krause, officer, $21. Andrew Habel, officer, $20. Dylan Housted, officer, $20. Timothy Capuano, officer, $20. James Fitzgerald, officer, $20. David R. Gendron, auxiliary officer, traffic control. Raymond Berniski, auxiliary officer, traffic control. Special appointees, Kathleen Belanger is matron, Louise Kelly, matron, Ken Wamet, Conway Chief, James uh, Savine, Waitley Chief, Donald uh, Bates, Waitley Sergeant, Crossing Guards, Diane Baronis, $26, Henrietta Cocott, $26. I second that motion. Okay. Any further discussion? No. no. Hearing none. All those in favor? I, Trevor McDaniel. I, Carolyn Ness. I, Dave Wolver. Uh, I have another um, message from uh, Chief, one time stipend, June 22nd, 2021. Dear Honorable Board, I'm, I am res uh, respectfully requesting the Select Board vote a one time stipend for the Police Department Administrative Assistant, Deborah, uh, Ms. Mrs. Deborah uh, Austin, uh, $2,500. As uh, the board is aware, Ms. Austin has been the single point of contact for all walk-ins, deliveries, mail, vaccine arrival, returns, and, recy and cycling paperwork for signatures of uh, town hall staff back to folks in the community for the past 15 months. Uh, we're broken down the 2,500 over 15 months equally rough, or roughly equals roughly a $1 an hour adjustment for being a front facing critical worker, um, which I'm not, convinced is even enough. However, it is a show of gratitude for an employee that has showed no fear while exercising protective measures only for the benefit of the community. Taking on this role for town hall has put Ms. Austin in the forefront of the COVID outbreak and placed her in harm's way when, um, when most were having second thoughts about leaving their homes. Respectfully, John, uh, Chief John Paturic Jr. I will second that and thank Deborah very much. Okay, any discussion? Okay, um, I, just to point out, uh, Deb has been right there almost every day during this whole pandemic. The front of, uh, town offices were shut down, so she had to handle basically everything, uh, the mail, everything, because the town personnel were not doing that. Uh, she stepped up, um, never said a word about, you know, complained about it. She just went about and did it uh, because she knew it had to be done. So. Um, very thankful for the way she did step up and what she did for the town. So, yep. it's pretty amazing. Okay. Um, all those in favor? I, Trevor McDaniel. I, Carolyn Ness. I, Dave Wolfram. Okay. Next one uh, ZBA appointments. Uh, nope, not yet. You want to read them or do you want me to read them? I'll read them. Um, 2023 is on the Board of Appeals. Uh, Robert J. Decker III, uh, 2021. Jennifer Remillard, alternate, up for reappointment 7-1-2021. Uh, 2023, Alexander Hershander, alternate. Uh, 20, uh, excuse me, he was 2023. 2021, David Potter, full member, up for reappointment 7-1-2021. Uh, 2022, Bernard Sadowski. Uh, 2021, Adam Sokolowski, full member, up for reappointment 7 1 2021. 
and 2022 be John's diversity uh, full member. I'll second that. Any discussion between the board? Um, well, I'm hoping that we can discuss uh, best practice policy. That uh, no, um, that is an agenda item uh, that we'll have to post. No, not yet. When I call on you. Okay. Okay. Yes. We'll set it up, and so that all right, we can review it and uh, come up with a policy that we can have a discussion about. Okay. Trevor, anything? At the moment. I'm okay. Here. Okay. Moment. Now we'll take entertain public. Come up and sit at the mic, please. Thank you. Welcome. Hi, welcome. Jennifer Remillard. I am an alternate member of the ZBA. Mm -hmm. um, I'm speaking on my behalf. Um, I was told when I was appointed that my appointment went through 2023. Um, it says that on the town's website as well. So the July 1st, 2021 is incorrect. And I would mm -hmm. just like to make sure that that is corrected, please. I was surprised because your name wasn't yeah. on the previous list we had. Right. No, it wasn't. And if you go... To the town's website, I just was at the site because I'm like, why is this here? Um, uh, I was supposed to finish out the was term of David Potter, whose term went through 2023 as the alternate. Right. So I would like to make sure that um, that it's is probably an correct. oversight. Can we get clarification, Jen or Casey? Yeah, that's probably just an oversight. You know, we've. Yeah. Probably okay. just an error on my okay. part. So I apologize. We were just using um, okay. different documents. So, Jen, I'm sorry about that. We'll fix that. And because it wasn't Thank on you. the previous list, you're right. So it I wasn't. To make sure yeah. that yeah. that was accurate. I was surprised to see here too. Um, and to make sure that usually Pat does them, and so then she was on out of the office, and so then I was trying. So I apologize. All right. For my errors. Okay. So I just wanted. We'll to get make it sure corrected. That Thank that you. Reflected. Yep. Thank you. Appreciate it. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Is there any limit on the time I got to speak? <laughs> I don't want to talk for an hour. No. Have no. I got a, at least do I have a few minutes? Yes. Okay. The main reason I came down tonight was to tell you that the American Farmland Trust did a study several years ago. They studied two towns in a Franklin County. One was a town of Deerfield. One was a town of Gill. The reason they did that was to find out the relative value of what residential property owners get for each dollar tax they pay, whether they're commercial, what the value is that they pay, and what they get for relative value, the same way with open space. Now, my concern is that I fully support businesses in this town. And the reason I do that is because when you look at these costs of community services, each dollar that's spent by a homeowner, they get a dollar and 16 cents in value. This thing was not done once, this was done twice for a town of Deerfield. The uh, commercial property and industrial properties get four, 39 cents of value. They put in a dollar in taxes, they get 39 cents in value. And the open space for each dollar that they pay in taxes, they get 29 cents in value. So the bottom line is the people who are making all the decisions of let's spend this and let's keep spending, 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 aren't looking out for the welfare of the town. They're looking out for the welfare of let's get what we want to get. My concern is business. I'm going to ask the Board of Selectmen to look at business growth in this town because I see there's problems with the planning board. And my concern about talking about the appointments now is I see people on there, the majority of which support business in town, and I want to keep them on the planning board. That's my only point. I want to make sure that you understand that the people in there study, do their work, and they come out with good logical decisions without getting into politics. They're not political at all. All they do is they want what's good for the town of Deerfield. So me, my position is simple. I support business. 
I wish that we didn't get all of these planning board articles that were passed because it's basically anti-business articles. And they say that, oh, we need the tools in the toolbox so that we can turn around and say no when we have to. Well, the problem is their job is not to say no, their job is to say yes, unless there's a problem. Their job is not to say no. I think they're looking at it and saying, well, now that I'm on the planning board, I can say no to everything. Well, guess what? We passed those articles, and I was one of them, even though I voted against that. And you know something? It's going to cost the town tens of thousands of dollars extra for doing the uh, town park, for doing the uh, contract for the sewage treatment plant. And if we ever turn around and get the senior housing, it's going to cost more. Just because you got to turn around, measure eight, every eight-inch tree, then you got to plant a compensatory four-inch tree. Some of the stuff they put in there is so ridiculous. And when we had town meeting, we didn't get a chance to really speak up. I kept my hand up with my yellow sticker for at least 10 to 15 minutes and nobody ever saw me. And I know at least four people in a row that want to talk to the issue and they didn't get the opportunity. But the concern about that I have now is I see the appointments that you have to make and especially to the ZBA those people have the best of heart and they, the best for the town in their heart, and that's what they want to do. So I support it, and I just want to tell you that. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Welcome. It's really, I was saying this uh, earlier, it's really nice to see people's faces in yes. person. I've only seen you guys on screen since I moved to Deerfield, so <laughs> it's really nice. Um, anyways, uh, my name is Annie Curtis um, and I live on River Road. I just wanted to take a minute to thank all of you for the really hard work that you do for our community. I know you put in a lot of hours and just listening to all the committees that you guys are on, like with FERCOG within our town, within different departments, it's a ton of work um, and it doesn't go unnoticed. Thank you. I also, I also know that there's a lot of town employees who put in their heart and souls into making this community a wonderful place to live. And I wanna acknowledge that too. And lots of volunteers for boards like the ZBA as well. Um, but I'm here today as a community member, as a mother, but also as a social worker, a professional social worker. And as a social worker, I'm bound by a code of ethics um, one of the ethics that we're bound by is that social workers are here to challenge social injustice. And part of that is ensuring, and I quote, ensuring equality of opportunity and meaningful participation in decision-making for all people. So as we move forward as a community and as we consider people who are being appointed to boards and the one that has come to light um, is the ZBA because of the dual role that an appointee had as a member um, or uh, I don't know if we're allowed to identify anything no. other than that, but um, as someone who worked in government, but also um, was holding this dual role. Um, I, I strongly urge the board and our community to really think about obviously the liability concerns that this brings forth, but from where I stand as a social worker, I believe that it's an issue of equi equity and access to decision-making power in our government and who sits on those particular types of boards. Certainly shining light on transparency um, and being open with the public about the, how the process works and people finding themselves into those appointments is really helpful. And I think other people may have some specific questions that maybe you can answer about that. But I think it's also acknowledging that there's inherent privilege involved with individuals who apply for and are selected for these positions for a variety of reasons. Um, this is not to say anyone is bad for volunteering their time to participate on these boards, but I think we need to acknowledge as a community that is a privilege to have the time to offer your expertise on one of these boards in an unpaid capacity. I also think it's important to note that sometimes our own networks and our education may favor us for a potential selection for one of these boards, which is inherently rooted in privilege. And that in some cases, some folks who find themselves on these boards may have power over citizens in other ways in our community. And all of those things- I gotta stop you there. Okay. 
That's out of line. It's out of line because you're bringing personalities into it. And the person that you're talking about is not here to defend himself. So that, that you cannot discuss. I, um, I wasn't referring to power in that capacity. I think that there's power in a whole variety of ways. I wasn't referring to one particular profession. I just want to clarify. So I was not trying but to But you're any addressing lines. the individual. You weren't addressing them. So power can it's be- It's my discretion. Okay. That's it. First, I will move on. Okay. So some of these dynamics can affect how the public might interact with these boards and maybe not feel comfortable coming in, in front of such boards. Um, so I think that's really important as we move forward and acknowledging how it is and what and processes. Again, I gotta stop again. If there is a problem with an individual, you have to go to the person's boss. Yeah, I'm person. not talking about an individual well, at the moment. I'm talking about standing in front of a board. Yeah and how dynamics can affect how people might feel comfortable mm -hmm. or not comfortable participating in democracy. And that's really what I'm talking about. Okay. Um, so in terms of moving forward, obviously I think liability is a very important issue as you're considering best practices. And I, I believe that we're all sitting around the table and we, we, I would hope that regardless of our political affiliation, that's something we're concerned about. I also think it's really important that we strongly consider issues of equity and access to power and transparency as we move forward with board appointments because it, it affects our democracy and the ability of our full electorate to participate as citizens in our community. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you. Thank you for your comments. Bruce? Bruce St. Peter's. As you know, I served as an assessor for seven years and also on the finance committee for four years. And I've got to know most everybody in this town hall. And I think I'm pretty comfortable with saying that, uh, you know, nobody is comfortable with all persons but I have seen most every employee, actually all the employees that I have dealt with have put aside their personal feelings when it came to that. I know I have a, as an assessor, when I looked at property cards or anything else, the last thing I ever looked at was a person. I looked at what they did, what they didn't do on that paper. And I, from what I've seen of the, every town employee, they do the same thing. And I would hope that the board would disregard a lot of this other things because uh, it's all about the qualifications of the individual that you feel are, are bring to the committee that you're appointing to. I guess the only comment I do have is about one committee is um, it appears that there is a planning board member either married to or a partner with one of your appointees to the ZBA. And so one or the other is going to have to recuse themselves constantly. And since you can't unappoint a planning board member, it's, uh, it's an elected position, then I would have you take a look as to whether the ZBA appointment can do their job without recusing themselves for anything that may have come through the planning board. Thank you. Julie? Hello, Julie Cavaco, North Hillside Road. Um, one of the things I've been noticing in the last couple of years in different meetings that I've gone to is that um, I'll go to a meeting and there will be you know, healthy discussion and there will be um, a good amount of feedback from the community. And then when it's brought to a vote, the planning board or zoning board or cultural council, whichever group we're talking about, will vote, make a vote. Um, but in the instances that these um, discussions are brought to town meeting, I'm noticing a lot of the town's voices voting against what the boards are voting for. Um, for instance, the last one I went to was, um, the finance committee, and they are required by Warren, as I understand it, to make um, an opinion um, and make 
uh, put forth an opinion for the warrant. And um, they voted no on some items that um, they just, period. <laughs> and then, as I understand it, I was unable to go to the meeting. I saw in the paper that the town itself voted yes for many of the things. So what I'm seeing is a bit of a disconnect between the appointees and the population. And um, I apologize for not bringing this conversation up earlier. I know it's late in the session, but that's one of the things that I would really encourage our board of select people to um, do is really try to get a broader range um, of people because I've seen it for a couple of years that our committees are voting no and our people are saying yes. And I know that we've got some big things coming down the pipeline and I think it's really good for um, everyone to be represented. So I thank you. I, and I would like to speak to that a little bit. I think um, I, I do notice that too. And I, um, I want to, I think hard about every vote I cast and I try to represent the people. Um, and, and, it's, and it's hard to sometimes, um, so it's hard to divorce ourselves from a situation or, or a topic or a vote we're gonna take because, um, and, and, and sometimes take in, I don't know how to say this. So we're immersed in this topic constantly, you know, yeah. every day, meeting after meeting, multiple meetings, different venues, doesn't matter the topic. There's just an immense amount of work that goes along with its job and all the capabilities or all, all the tasks that job has. So we feel like we know the subject intimately. And then, uh, you know, and then it, and then at town meeting, it'll vote somewhat different than what I wanted or had voted for or think should be right for the town. And I just, I have to respect that. Um, I, I, I need to respect the people's vote because they feel, you know, they, they got whatever education they got on it. They felt this was, this was accurate, but um, sometimes it's a little frustrating because you know that it can, they couldn't have possibly put the same amount of education and thought into the item just because they haven't been dealing, you know, they just see it at a town meeting. Maybe they've attended a pre-town meeting or something, but haven't like the planning board hadn't the planning board dealt with these items all the whole time and whether it voted for or against or whatever. So it is, it is complicated to understand what people are, um, how much information they have on a subject and how much weight they uh, put behind their vote versus, you know, how much work we're doing day in and day out on the subject. Um, but um, so I do, I do, I recognize that. I do want to find a way to, you know, try to uh, take in as much, but I'll never, you know, I'll never vote the way everybody wants you to vote, right? Because there's always going to be people that want you to vote a different way and, uh, or see things that, that I don't see or haven't seen what I've seen, you know. That, well, I and I also think some of it has to do with the fact that we have our circles of people. Like yeah. I work at the library, so my circle of people read books um, and are involved in that aspect of the community. Yeah. So I may not always appreciate um, what's happening at the senior center or, um, can, or the schools. Yeah. Um, and so that's the expertise I bring to it. Um, yeah. And I hope that if I'm ever in that position, that I have a chance to really listen to the other voices. Um, yeah. What I feel um, is that a lot of times when people are in the big time intensive committees, that it's a real commitment to listen to everybody. And um, the meetings can drag on a long time. And I appreciate every letter I've written having been read um, yeah. and recognized, but um, it's not going to get any cleaner. So if we can just really get more voices involved, um, understand that we need to listen to more of the voices that are coming forward, because, you know, the person who gets up and talks, it represents at least 10 other people. Right. And, and that's one of the things I think we forget about too, is that the people that are boldly talking are the ones that are, they've got their own circles and that's, what's tripping us up. And I also think going back to, um, Ms. Curtis's comment that, 
the people that stand up at town meeting and speak are the ones that feel empowered to do so or have the courage to do so, um, where many people um, just by their circumstance or personality don't have that power. And so uh, maybe they write a letter instead or something like that, uh, or don't say anything at all and never get their voice heard. So I do want to recognize that um, it does come with a bit of privilege to sit in this seat. Um, comes with a lot of a lot of work and a lot of um, lost time with family and yeah. all of that as well. Um, there's a big sacrifice to to do this job, but yeah. it does come with some okay. privilege to be able to do it too. And I recognize that. So, and Jennifer. I thank you for your work, David or Trevor, whoever. Um, I just have one comment too. If if anybody has a, I I recently made a request to the ethics um, at the state, and they said that. I wasn't able to ask a question on behalf of another person. Um, and if that person gives permission to me or somebody else, they're able to then contact that person and give them that information. So if people have questions and want somebody else to be the voice, I'm willing and able to be that person um, in order to answer some questions to a broader group. Thank and you. I also saw hands up, but now I see. Is it... yeah, I'll, I'll acknowledge, you know, one of the hardest things for individuals to do is speak in public. Right. The, there's been study after study. It's probably the hardest thing in one's life. <clears throat> and quite frankly, I know when I graduated from high school, that's the last thing in the world I was ever going to do is talk in public. Um, I went on to teach at GCC for 20 years. Taught at Williams College, I taught at UMass, and now I'm a selectman. So, you know, I got over the, the fright factor, but a lot of people don't have those experiences, and it's very, very hard for them to get up and speak, and I realize that. I have a question from the audience. Do you want to take that? Sure, Ray Lou. Oh, is that what yep. you're saying? I mean, oh, Lord. 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 Oh, Lori's on Zoom? Yeah. Yeah, yeah and then- Why don't you come up? Yeah, come on up and sit anyways. So uh, that we don't right forget on. about you. <laughs> right. Go ahead, Lori. Hi, so I have become more involved in um, town politics maybe since my kids were off on their own. And it is amazing all the things that go on and all the projects that you see that get successfully completed and those that get started and are not completed. Am I? Um, yep. I just, I'm echoing, I don't know why, sorry about that. I think um, it's a system, Lori, I'm sorry. I think oh, it's okay. on a computer I, because of the system. I have one thing on, okay. So briefly, I want to commend the board for that information session that you did before town meeting. I am thrilled to have the access of um, going to meeting by Zoom. It makes it much more convenient for a lot of us to pay attention. And I think that a lot of us, more of us do need to pay attention. I think town meeting was wonderful to hear different points of view, but I found it very offensive when people had a lot of derogatory things to say about people, about the planning board, not their policy, but the people. And if it was the policy, then there were adequate opportunities for people to come to the public hearings and express their concerns. So I also heard tonight people um, trashing the planning board. And I heard Mr. Wolfram that you said you didn't want that to happen. So. I, I really um, take offense at that. So I just wanted to share that. We have to go by the letter of the law. And unfortunately, it's very specific. And I can't afford to put the liability on the town. That's part of my job as a member of this board. You know, it's, I'm not looking out for personal interests. I'm looking out for the, the interests of the town of Deerfield. And going by what the lawyers tell us, we have to be very, very careful with we're discussing certain things. So, 
But my objection is that you let people say rude things about the board, which I frankly might be wrong, but to me, the current planning board has is doing homework and is going to trainings and is learning about things that are new. In the past, it's been unclear whether there were conflicts of interest based on property owners who had some profit to gain by their participation. I, I just don't think trashing a, a volunteer board like that is appropriate. Okay, thank you. Thank you. It's not. It's not. Right. Welcome, Raylan. Hi, um, I'm Raylan Bialik, um, and I'm the chair of the personnel board. And I just wanted to say a few words. Um, it just came to my attention yesterday that there was some concerns in the community about appointments, and and it, I haven't really had a chance to do much research into it. Um, I would really like to have the chance to do more research. And I know that there's a, um, a deadline of June, is it June 30th for the appointments that you're, you're working on right now for some of them. And well, I guess our personal board's request is if possible that the appointment could be held off until we, or appointments, until their, the personnel board has a chance to have a discussion, to do some research and have a discussion and to, to just learn more about if there should be some policy about, about appointments that it doesn't, um, to make recommendations about that. Um, but again, like I said, I only learned about this yesterday. So I feel like I'm just, I'm kind of new to this. Um, I, I don't have a whole lot of background information about it, but it feels like something that would be good to learn more and for the personnel board to have a chance in our role to reflect upon it and to have a discussion and have a meeting and, and then make a recommendation. Because the personnel board, as I understand it, our purview does include both employees and people who are appointed to boards. And so this seems like the perfect kind of situation where we could have some reflection and have some discussion and then make some recommendations to the select board. Thank you. So our original meeting was, our normal meeting is July 19th, um, which is the third um, Monday of the month. But I know you have a date of June 30th that you're shooting for. So we're trying to see if we could push up a meeting, if that is, it would be, be useful to, to you. It. What? It wouldn't be enough time to post it, I don't believe. Well, if the meeting was Monday, we would have to post by Thursday. So if the meeting was the 28th of June, we could post Thursday. Jen. Jennifer, yeah, you I, I received your email, Raylun, about requesting that date. However, we have two Zoom accounts and they're already taken. We have our town common and our 350 at that night. So. Can they meet the 29th? I'd have to look. I don't know that offhand. I just got the email requesting the 28th. Can you check on the 29th? I can. Yeah. Um, thank you. Mm -hmm. okay. Anybody else? Thank you. Thank you, Raylan. Uh, Jeff. One, one sec, Jeff. Uh, she beat you to it. <laughs> Welcome. Hi, my name is Jennifer Reynolds and just on this last thing, I don't believe the personnel board has any business with boards and committees. They oversee employees, not boards and committees. Um, I think you should go ahead with these appointments. Um, I see a lot of residents not being heard in this town and there's a well-organized small group of people that seem to be just attacking everything because they don't agree with it. Um, but I think you should just go ahead with these appointments and let, like everybody gets code of ethics training. There are ways to have employees serve on boards and committees. It's done in many towns and unless there's a violation, th there should be no reason to stop it. Thank you. Okay, thank thank you. you. Jeff. Jeff. Good evening. Good evening. Jeff Upton, resident of South Deerfield. And boy, there's a lot of things I want to say, but I'll keep it as short as possible. Uh, one thing I would like to thank all 
people in Deerfield that serve on boards. And whether it's paid position or whether it's volunteer, it's not an easy thing to do at times, as you've already addressed, Trevor. Uh, I have been in town roughly about 50 years. I'm 70 or close to 70 years old. And there's 5,000 roughly residents in Deerfield. Uh, I will try to be politically correct with this. When I have a individual or a group of people that stand before you and address you with their concerns, or their thoughts or their opinions and make it sound like it's coming from the entire Deerfield community, I just want you to know that is not true. As I said, I've been in town almost 50 years, almost 70 years old. I think I can speak for myself and I will. I'll speak for myself. I don't need to have somebody speaking for me. Now to go on, we have had a system here of check and balances. One thing I have learned is that it works quite well since I've been in town anyways, and it's worked quite well up until we ran against the wall here just recently. And we all know what that is. So I'll be careful on what I say. It's very important to have people on these boards with a variety of backgrounds because they bring different perspectives and opinions and they do debate, they vet. Do they always agree? No, but usually it works out where a decision is made. They've come to a conclusion, they've done what they needed to do, they did their job. And I think that's very important. All committees should do that. Now, just because I don't agree with something doesn't mean it's wrong. And as we all know, sitting here, there's been times where I haven't agreed with you people and that's fine. You know, let it go, let's move on. If we're all here for the betterment of Deerfield, the town of Deerfield, at some point in time, You've got to let it go and move on. And that's very important. Now, maybe some people don't want to do that. Uh, I'm sorry to see that. And, you know, when I have a, a people or a person say, well, they want to hear all voices. And then we see a situation like we did at the annual town meeting. And that was well played. There's no question about it. Well planned out, well played, dirty politics, I think. But they pulled it off. They didn't give people a chance to speak. Whether it would have made a difference or not, who knows? Probably not with the way things went. But you're in a situation here where everybody is a resident of Deerfield, some longer than others, but everybody should have the time and the right to express their opinions. And to uh, be in a situation where, uh, as we were saying, personal attacks and that stuff shouldn't be happening. That shouldn't be happening. These people are putting in their time and their energy and they're doing the best to their ability. And we could pick apart any board if we wanted to. And I don't think we should be doing that as residents in Deerfield. What we need to do is open, open up lines of communication, discuss a little bit more. You may not agree all the time, that's okay. But we should be able to get into a situation where we can at least on most issues do what's best for Deerfield. And I'll leave at that so I don't step over any line here. Thank you, Jeff. Thank you. Uh, we got two Hi, hands I up. have a couple hands up online on on a Zoom. So, how would you like to handle it, David? I can't hear. Would you like uh, yes. take one from Zoom and then one from the audience? Sure. Okay. okay. So, Sean. 
Yeah, hi, good evening. Thanks for taking public comments. My name is Sean Durrett. I live on Sugarloaf Street. Um, I think it would be helpful to clarify if the select board is able, um, what are the qualifications that you look for in the zoning board appointees? Um, and I'm also wondering, does the public get to know the names of, of every applicant for that position? Do you discuss the applicants and their qualifications publicly so that, you know, there is a chance for town residents to understand who's looking to serve, who's who's submitted a letter of interest? Um, for example, it's my understanding that a resident named Kate Lawless has submitted a letter of interest. I don't know Kate. I don't know Kate's qualifications, so I'm not speaking to that specifically. But just wondering if you might be able to share some information about the general process with us. It's a great, great, very great question. Um, and I think some of this is that um, just in my five short five years of doing this, th there has not really. Um, <laughs> sorry. Um, there hasn't been, uh, there really haven't been a lot of people stepping up. I mean, I, I think I went through the appointment list the other day and vacancy, 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 vacancy. Um, I was heartened to see when I um, reached out after a meeting the other day when we found out we had absolutely no uh, coverage at the Tritown Beach. Um, I think I got 10 people that reached out and said, I'd serve, I'd serve. And then um, you know, I, I, I was like, wow, more than three, like, how, what are we going to do now? And then, um, you know, then I, 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 because we had so many, I said, well, anybody, you know, just send a letter to the office. And then we, we would then uh, have a discussion at our meeting and appoint somebody and we've yet to get one letter. Um, so, you know, it takes public participation to not only say you'll serve, but actually do the work of serving and coming forward and saying I want to work and then, um, and then partaking in the meetings. And um, what I look for qualifications, I, I, I'd like to see a rounded out board of skill, um, you know, especially with the zoning and, and, you know, planning board people run. So they really don't need a qualification, but it's up to the general public. Um, when it comes to appointed positions, um, I'd like to see a, a, a a rounded out group of skill there, you know, it's hard to find, it would love to have a realtor and a, you know, a developer and, and different people that would do, um, you know, that are in the industry and have had developed land and know how to re read blueprints. And, um, but you, you know, you don't always get that. Those that have those skill may be busy with their family or busy at work. So a lot of times you're looking for somebody to serve and you've got one name and that's it. And nobody, you know, we'll say at a meeting, I don't know how many times you've heard me say, we need people to serve. We need, you know, please step up. And I was hoping when I first ran that be younger people getting involved and we're starting to see that. We are, uh, we are starting to see more voices coming through at meetings. The Zoom is helping tremendously. More people are involved now and, you know, with, with different social media groups, people are seeing what's going on in town and voicing their opinions. And I think that's wonderful. I mean, I think we're getting to a place where we can then start to choose instead of just the people who maybe have that, are privileged to have that time to step up and, and serve. Um, or, you know, they, they have the, they don't have kids at home and they can afford a sitter or whatever it might be whatever circumstance they have the privilege to be able to serve their community. And um, so we, we're getting more and more people saying I've got that time or I've, I've got that ability. And so I'm, I'm really looking for a rounded out set of skills. And of course we don't always, you know, we have a, a few short weeks to kind of decide who, who might, might be good. Um, and then I, you know, the people that, that are currently serving, do, do we feel like, uh, they're doing a, a good enough job. They're thinking about it. They're they're following the rules. Um, and, and is there a you know is there a serious infraction why we wouldn't appoint somebody? I mean, I, I feel like there has to be a really major reason why. Or it might be that I just um, obviously just my own personal opinion. Um, I would share it with the board, and, and maybe I would sway them or not to say let's get a different. Um, 
a different vision. Maybe people have been on long enough and we want to get new fresh ideas from the community. And I think that's what happens with elections and you get the, the, you know, the planning board was a, a major change in the last few years. And, um, and they've brought forward things that, that they felt were important and the community agreed with them, you know, a couple Saturdays ago. And so we're off on a different, a different path than we were before. And we'll see how that pendulum swings. You know, it always goes one way and then back the other. And I'm always trying to find the middle. Like, you know, how do we treat each other with respect? It's really important. Um, do your job and make sure your votes you're making are based on research. Don't just show up at a meeting and go, what's on the agenda today? You know, you have to really put the time in if you're going to serve and study what those uh, issues are. And these these decisions are, are much more complicated than they ever have been in the past. I, you know, the laws that we are putting in place as a town bylaw, I mean, just the massive site plan review change that went through the planning board and all the other major zoning changes that were ha handed down from the state by the governor this, this year, these are, these are major issues to, to take under, um, to learn and to be trained on. And so it's not, it's not always just, well, I've got a little bit of time to serve. You, you've really got to do your homework now. And it, it's over my head, way over my expertise, really. I never really understood land use or planning you know, before I started doing this job. Um, but I've learned a lot over, over the last few years. And I just try to keep, you know, as a sponge absorbing that stuff. So I, I look at that. And then so the process is really, who do we have for a name? And it really is like, do we have any names? And now that we're finally getting other names, it's, we look at those qualifications, we look at the board and do we want to round that out? Is there some serious infraction we need to remove somebody for? or just not reappoint, or we, do we want a different vision? So that's kind of the discussion we've had. And, you know, we never really, never had any issue with who served in town. If they were a town resident, taxpayer or whatever, they, they were here to serve. And it really didn't matter what they did for a day job because, you know, honestly, I feel like these are separate issues. When you come to a board, you are a select board member. Nothing else really should take account you look at the, the facts that are in front of you and you make a decision and I'll either agree or I won't. And it's not up to me to decide. I, I appoint to that position and, um, and, and that's it. I, I, don't want any, I don't want any influence and I don't wanna move positions around to get some sort of outcome. I just want it. I want people to treat each other with respect and do a good job. And then, you know, as we get a chance to appoint again, we maybe we make a change and it's no, there's no um, animus or um, if, if we decide to move somebody out and move somebody else in, I still am huge, huge respect for the people who we're removing because they, they gave of their time and to the community. And so I don't think there's, um, there's no, uh, there should be no shame in, in leaving that board and no special privilege for getting there. I think really people should just treat it as doing the job that, that that's asked of them and, to treat people with respect and our um, and our residents because they're really there, especially on the zoning board, to give a variance, to give somebody um, you know that a little bit of a break or a uh, a chance to do something that really isn't in the rules, you know. And and so really, that's their job is to kind of provide those those chances when it really shouldn't affect too many other people, but their piece of property got hooked up in an old you know, an old bylaw or something. So I went on way too long, but um, sorry. Thank, thank you for answering. I, if there is time to know, Carolyn, or if anyone else can share, if there are other applicants for the ZBA, and if you turn down applicants, do you go back to them and let them know what you were maybe looking for that they didn't have? That's all. Thank you. Thank you. Um, Skip? I yeah, well, Ann and Mary, you'll be next. Thank you. My name is Skip Olmstead, uh, and I've been in town. I'm a Johnny come lately, or I was accused of being a Johnny come lately. Uh, I've been in town for 55 years now. So, like most people in New England, if you weren't born here, you're, you're a Johnny come lately. Uh, 
and I, I don't take offense at the call with Johnny come lately in that kind of situation. Uh, I've served my first, my first elected position and appointed position was on the planning board. I was uh, elected to the planning board in 1974. Uh, I served for three years and then I was elected to the school committee and I didn't feel that I could do both the planning board position and the school committee position. So I got off the, the uh, planning board. Uh, and I served for 13 years on the school committee, took a seven year break and served another 12 years in the school committee. I also served on the school building committee for the elementary school. As a matter of fact, I wrote the article for town meeting in 1986 that established the school building committee. And in, in all of that time, there were those situations where I had to make decisions. And a lot of those decisions were based on having, having looked over a situation for a relatively long period of time whether it was weeks or, or months or whatever. But when the only thing that, that you saw was if you came to a school committee meeting and you couldn't see it on TV back then, came to a school committee meeting, uh, maybe the superintendent would say, we would like to do such and such. And so somebody would make a, a motion and we'd vote on it as if we'd never heard it before and yet we'd heard it for several weeks or several months and we had talked with the school committee members or we talk to the town administrator. Um, so what you see the select board or any other board doing uh, probably isn't, you know, they've spent a fair amount of time in most instances looking over. So when you make an appointment to a particular board, a zoning board of appeals, quite honestly, there will be plenty of times when they only have the one applicant for it. And, but they may know the applicant and, and expect the person to do the job. Personnel board. How many members do you have on the personnel board? Four. This short one, you've been short for, I don't know, six years. That's a, that's a, a, a selectman's responsibility to appoint that person. Now, I yell at them for doing that occasionally or not getting it done. But I also know that they've got 50 other things on their plate. And that's just one, one position. So I, I, I suppose I could say I take offense when somebody says, you know, you, you don't give an explanation or you don't, you don't look at, you don't research this person. We don't have time. We do the best we can. Uh, and I hate to defend the, the Board of Selectmen. Yes, you do. Uh, <laughs> but in this case, I will defend the Board of Selectmen. They've got a job to do. And you know, I think it's safe to say a couple that, times. What's that? We've been known to disagree a couple times. I know. You've been wrong. Too. <laughs> never, never, <laughs> Skip. Never. But are you I'm speaking, I'm speaking to everybody because I, I was not, I'm sorry. If, 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 you, you, you we can't were, hear you if you're speaking in the audience. Oh, I'm sorry. I was just saying that no. I can't hear anybody in the audience who's making comment. They need to come oh, to the microphone. Uh, gotcha. Thank you. So uh, in any event, you have an appointment to make and you're the only one that can make that appointment. That appointment is your responsibility and I know that because it says so. I have not read the, the bylaws recently. But that's where the authority comes to make the appointment. And it doesn't tell you how you have to go about researching. And, you know, there are times when I can sit back and, and you know, roll my eyes with, with an appointment that you might make. But I also know that it was probably the only person who gave an interest, showed any interest in the job. Uh, you might have known the person, know that they would give it their best. Um, so in this case, the ZBA appointments, it's your responsibility. Uh, I don't think the personnel board, and I've actually served on the personnel board several times over the past 20 years, 
Uh, I don't think it's the personnel board's responsibility to uh, chime in and give you their opinion, unless you ask for it, I guess. But you don't have to. Uh, as a member of the most recently the finance committee, and chaired that committee for a number of years, we made an appointment. We make appointments to one member of the finance committee is appointed to the personnel board. We have one member of the finance committee that's appointed to uh, the capital improvement committee. And I might talk briefly with, as chairman, with uh, with members of the finance committee, but usually it's, is there someone who's interested in serving on the personnel board? Please. Is there somebody who's willing to serve in the capital improvement committee? Uh, or appointments to the finance committee are made by the town moderator. And, uh, you know, I've talked to the town moderator and said, you know, this person or that person has expressed an interest in, in the position. I don't know if you have any other people, but, you know, I can, I can attest to this person and say, I think this would be a good candidate. And maybe the moderator went along with me or did not go along with me. But that's, that was his job. I so, would just like to clarify, though, Skip, that the reason why the personnel committee is involved is because we're talking about a policy. I attended a webinar to get a discount on our liability insurance. As you know, we, um, Trevor and I make a point at our <laughs> MMA conference to get maximum credits, which is budgeted against our liability insurance. And I was worried we did not have enough credits. So I, because it was virtual this year because of the pandemic, so I took a webinar on um, the, our conduct, good conduct policy and best practices. One of the things that was discussed was best practice that town employees do not serve on regulatory boards. There's more than enough case law on that. And I brought that forth. We just haven't had time because of the number of issues that we've had to talk about, town meeting, pandemic still going on, et cetera, et cetera. But it has been disappointing to me that we took the money, we took the credit off our insurance, and then we have not had um, a good discussion of the policy. And that's why um, the personnel committee is involved because they think maybe that's worth discussing. And as I said before, if you ask the personnel committee for their opinions or to look at it, I certainly don't have a problem with that. It's just a recommendation they would make to the to the select yep. board. Ultimately, I think we have to discuss it and make that a policy decision on that. And I'm just disappointed that we're not tabling the you know appointments until we have a chance to discuss it. That's all. On the other hand, we've been doing it this way for how many years? And, doesn't and I, mean and that I, is correct. That's correct. No, it doesn't. And and also, like I said, Skip. It, it is part of our credit to the, our liability insurance that at least we would take, make a good faith effort to discuss it. And, and, it, and it is your decision you know, now or two weeks from now. I don't disagree with that at all. Uh, I would disagree with it <coughs> if, town, if the town uh, functions had to come to a stop just so that we could have this discussion. Uh, I, I do not believe there is a zoning board. Sorry. Uh, meeting scheduled before June 30th. So I think there's plenty of time for okay. um, potentially the personnel committee to meet on the 29th and we can continue the discussion on the 30th. Okay. Uh, Ann Mary. Hi there. Welcome. Thank you. Um, respectfully, um, as one of the people who shows up and does the work, um, I would like to keep, um, I would like to ask Mr. Wolfram to discourage pot shots against other town volunteers and employees. For instance, the planning board did not engineer anything. We showed up for public meetings. We invited public comment and we reacted to the public comment that we got in our roles as planning board serving our town. So I think that maybe if you're going to discourage people from talking about any individual member, maybe we could also discourage people from talking about 
the boards in general and impugning them. And I don't like to be impugned and I didn't engineer anything and nobody on my board engineered anything, Mr. Upton. Thank you very much. Could you repeat that? Because I had muted the select board so there wasn't feedback. You want me to repeat what I just said? No, no. N not, not you, not, Anne not you, Ann Mary. Okay. <laughs> but you can if you, if you want. <laughs> I don't think it needs repeating. <laughs> no. I'm, trying to, I'm trying to eliminate the feedback. So I am muting, anyways, the other mic in order when people online are speaking. I, I will just say, just let me jump in real quick. On our agenda, if you all want to stay, we're talking about sound engineering later to get all this much better for us down the road. But, yeah. It's yeah. an appropriation of $3,900. I think yeah. all of us will be in support of it. I hope so. Oh. Welcome. Um, I'm Epsana Becker, Baker Lane. I think there's a lot of great points being brought up um, in this discussion. And um, I'd like to focus the discussion more on the issue, which seems to be policy. And uh, someone brought up the fact that we have a lot of checks and balances. Uh, what are they? We have checks in, and in balances. In relation to what? He brought it up. There were checks and he said we have a lot of checks and balances. Uh, he keeps saying he's going, but I don't remember how he said it. But what are the specific checks and balances? Well, wait, hang on a sec, because we're not going to be, no one's going to be able to hear you in the... In oh, so I just so want, I just is, wanted to know what they were, a, because... As related to what? As to, as related to how, how decisions are made, how, how boards function, whether they need to be readjusted, whether they need, you know, like, as you said, if, if something is out of line, but uh, the issue is here, do we need a policy for boards? Are all boards... Uh, appointed? How no. many boards are elected and how many boards are appointed? So I, I can help with that a little bit. No, it, it, it differs. The ultimate check and balance is your ballot box, right? Is, is election. So when you, when you go and, and voice your voice, you are either selecting one of us to make these important decisions for the residents, or you are actually electing as it, as it related to the planning board, that, so really it's the planning board and the select board that are elected and the assessors. That's it. That's it. Everyone else is either appointed or a member of another, like the capital planning is kind of made up of everybody board and then we may appoint somebody from the, from the area. So really decisions have to be made and, and this is kind of how the town structure has been for, for years. Okay. So, okay. and if, if people want a change, they want to change out one of us because they don't think that we're appointing the right people or we're not doing our job well enough. That's the ultimate check and balance is like your representation in town. It's a private vote. Nobody knows how you voted. You go in and you just say who you want to lead the town and make these tough decisions. And so that's, that's you know, the main one. And then it's, it's open discussion in a board when we appoint people. And again, a lot of times nobody wants to serve and we have to twist arms to go on one board or the other. And, and I'm, again, I'll say again, I'm thrilled that there's people in the audience tonight. I mean, how many select board meetings? There's never anybody here. <laughs> and, um, but lately, you know, with Zoom and more people getting involved, I think it's wonderful. And we're getting more voices out there and you're seeing a change in planning, the elected, Positions, you're seeing that change. Okay. So it really, it's it's election, and then. Not you, not so, um, so the question about policy is the issue here tonight. Is do we need a policy? And I would encourage you to go ahead with meeting with the personnel board because I'm listening to the comments and wondering why do we have a personnel board that wouldn't communicate with you? Obviously, it would be a discussion. And no one's twisting anyone's arm. It's discussion to bring out all kinds of issues that people yep. can think about. And to I encourage you to postpone decisions on what just to go ahead, but to consider a policy change because it could be very beneficial in the long term for issues like the checks and balances that we have concerns about. And the other issue I would bring about is do we need to think about having 
physicians or certain boards become elected physicians yes. so that the ballot, the people here in the audience, the community at large can pick at the ballot and whether you're whatever, if you're an employee or not employee, that wouldn't matter at that point because you're, you know, maybe that is a situation where we can take a look at, but also to take a look at those other situations and really look at them and say, does this have merit? If this has merit, let's take a look at it. If we prove that it doesn't have merit, then we've gone the full circle, we've discussed it, we've opened it up, we've allowed people's opinions. And uh, that's what I'm suggesting that you do go ahead and you postpone a decision until you do meet with these boards. So, so I'll just reply to that a little bit. You know, personally, I don't, I, I'm, it's, I'm happy to have the personnel's uh, mm -hmm. dis, you know, advice on this or consent, you know, but, uh, or discussion, but it really, it's really up to our board to I make this decision and, and decide a policy. And really right now, where we're at today is that it, that it is our decision do we have a policy? Who do we appoint? If, if the public wants to get together and change our appointing authority and, and have it be elected, I think that's important to discussion to have. And I think, I, think it's, I think it's the right thing to do. And I also think it's a good idea to discuss whether we should have a policy or not. Mm -hmm. My concern is kind of holding up appointments um, last minute so that mm -hmm. we don't appoint people uh, you know, and then decide to have a policy not to appoint people. So I think uh, that's Trevor. my biggest concern. So I really want to make sure that if we discuss this policy, we discuss it aside from anything else. And we just discuss, do we want a policy? Do we think it's best practice? And I may be in, in, in favor of that. I just mm -hmm. think um, Well, that's more what has to, to come out that. of this. Yep. The timing and everything. That's mm -hmm. what this is it all is. about. It all came up, came up like that. So uh, it's all about, I think we are on a road to going somewhere. Yeah, I think so too. We'll get there. We go. Casey? Thank you. Um, I just want to be clear with everyone that there is a bit of a gray area in terms of the part that personnel plays with special municipal employees. So I'm going to investigate that with council. I guess I have a question as I'm, you know, taking a lot in this evening and about this. I'm sorry, this. could, could, um, could you, you just repeat like your name? Lou Vincent. Um, I'm wondering if we're not in compliance right now with best practices and code of conduct, wouldn't that present a problem if we went ahead with the appointment? That's not true. We it, are, well, I'm, that's my question. Yeah, so our attorneys have, have advised us that we are compliant. And so I have a question about transparency about legal counsel as well in regard to some of that. But but as we're seeing, you know, different uh, municipalities across the state are looking at best practices and not appointing town employees to boards. Isn't that something that we should seriously consider before our next appointment? And is there some way we can delay the appointment a little bit longer until this becomes more clear. Casey. In terms of council's re request for information and transparency, there's a, there's a difference in how you treat an employee in terms of confidentiality of the employee, even a special municipal employee has some rights to confidentiality. So when there's a question of conduct or other things that gets brought up in a different venue. Uh, when it comes to a policy that Carolyn has, has referred to, which is a best practice, generally a best practice is there's, some, there's a research period for best practice. And frankly, I wasn't able to go to the seminar, excuse me, the seminar that Carolyn went to. So we need to have a little bit of time to look at something, but I did want to clarify with people that special municipal employees and town employees, there is a gray area there. So we need some clarification with council and I already sent her an email while I was
Casey, you muted. You know, uh, so we have attorneys, right? The town has attorneys, and then we use attorneys as a select board, and that's a that's a um, you know attorney kind of client privilege where you, not everything is public out to the public. When you're in a you know say executive session, something like that, where you're deliberating, you um, after everything is done, you then all those minutes get posted, but it's usually quite a bit later after the after the item is done. So not everything that we discuss with attorneys is public knowledge. It just, so you need to have some attorney client privilege to be able to perform your job and make sure you're, you're doing the right thing and protecting the town, protecting yourself and your own rights. Um, but, you know, most everything else will, will get, you know, public reference request or whatever will just be out there in minutes or on, on a public meeting. Would it make sense at this point to seek uh, some kind of counsel from the state of Massachusetts to see what most small towns are doing and what would be considered recommended best practices for our small town? Well, I think that we would have uh, that discussion, but the question tonight is, does it have to happen right now or does it have to happen after we appoint? Um, and, you know, we've had, um, I'll just stop there. So, okay. I can, you know, Thank certain you. things I'd like to discuss, but I can't. So. Thanks. Okay, Jennifer. Thank you. Jennifer Ramillard, Conway Street. Um, speaking in two, two hats, I guess. Um, one, um, in my opinion, Mr. Upton's comment was deflammatory against our moderator because the moderator at town meeting was the one count calling on people to uh, give their opinions and comments from the audience. Um, and I really find that really disappointing because I feel Mr. Graves does a wonderful job at trying to balance everything at the moderation um, and has several people have said, you know, defamatory commentary has gone against uh, the planning board and certain select board members and other things over the years. And more recently, um, you know, through, through the meetings here and the planning board is an elected body. So is the select board. Um, there's no reason that anybody personally should be bashed for giving their opinion and for doing their job. Right. Um, my other comment is, uh, thank you, Mr. Wolfram, for answering the question about, you know, were we in breach? Because that was a concern as to, you know, getting that discount and whatnot moving forward. But my other comment is there are two alternate members, myself and Alex Hirschwerder. Um, Sorry, Alex, if I got your name. Hirschwerder. Thank you. Um, who are alternate members. So while you are in consideration, a point that Mr. Upton brought up as to whether or not uh, one of the ZBA members should be discredited or recuse themselves because they're, um, you know, in a relationship with a member of the planning board and also, you know, the personnel issue that may be there. Um, so there are two members who could make those, uh, you know, who could participate in a ZBA ruling um, if a member, if a meeting or in a, you know, thing were to come up in front of the ZBA. So I assume that you appointed these alternates, you know, because you felt that they could do the job. So if more legal recourses need or more legal research is needed, whether by Casey, by council, by the personnel board, um, I don't see what the rush is to make the decision before the, the June 30th deadline is. You have ample, uh, you know, members to make a quorum for the ZBA. Um, as a member of the ZBA, I have not seen anything come through, you know, that's going to be there in the next few weeks, to my knowledge. Obviously, I'm not the chair, so I don't always see everything that comes through right away. Um, but I think, you know, as a select board, you have a due diligence to do for yourself, for the community of Deerfield. I think a lot of things have been brought up. Uh, you know, many members of the community aren't sure how the appointment uh, selection goes, um, and with this knowledge, maybe there are more people willing to come forward. I, I do not know. Um, so I just speak to that because I think um, there is a lot of stuff, not just CBA, but other boards, you know, thorough research needs to be done on people who come into appointments. Um, you know, I'm on two other boards, but I volunteered my time. It's not an appointed position at the historic commission and the uh, steering committee for the 350th. Um, so I think that there is ample opportunity for the board to take a, 
make a timely decision and to do the due diligence and research. You have people to form a quorum for the ZBA with alternates. You have, you know, your attorneys that you could rely on for, for their discussion, and you have made this open to the community. Um, I think through social media and other means, you know, word, word travels in a small town. Um, so I think you may end up getting more volunteers other than Ms. Lawless, who, you know, who has been mentioned, whether or not she has submitted, I'm unaware specifically, but, you know, just through that. So thank you for your time. I appreciate you being able to do things in person and still via Zoom. I think you're going to continue to get a lot of participation. Thank you. I hope thank, so. you. thank you. Uh, Julie? Oh, yeah. Again, Julie Cavaco, um, it's not extensive experience, but I was the chair of the cultural council and I'm also on the school council. And when I took over the chair as the um, cultural council, we were sort of like, wait a minute, three people are leaving and like, we're only gonna have two. And so I had the ability to change the appointment date. And so I tried to swap it out so that I would have three come on and three go off. So we would always have some experienced members on it. And then I noticed once at a cultural, I mean, at the council meeting, um, the principal had the right to change the um, dates when she was reestablishing um, when she had come on board. So I would just suggest to you that maybe you have the ability also to just shorten it. If you feel pressure to make appointments for July 1st, because that's our standard practices in this town, and maybe COVID, Zoom, vacations threw everything off, maybe we could just point, appoint everything to be terms of through September 1st, and then have some time to re, refigure it. But that's up for you to decide. I just wanted to give you that experience on my part and how it helped me through those much less committed committees, but thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Julie. Tully. Hi, Tolly Stark, Keats Road. Um, I just had a few questions. So when I sat before you last week, um, I was told that the uh, reappointments, actually both reappointments, even though we were mainly discussing one, um, would be tabled until um, there was um, a meeting with council. So I'm wondering if the board has had an executive session meeting with council? No. No. Okay, so how does that work? Is it not decided as a board or how does that process happen? I, I guess I interpreted that you all would meet with council together to discuss it. No, I said that I said that I needed to speak to council. It wasn't it wasn't that I needed the board to speak to council. So uh, we have to post for executive session, and it should be an executive session. So, um, as you know, when you talk to a lawyer, how you ask the question gives you the answer. The lawyer will give you the answer. So, um, it would be a better practice to have all three of us in the same room talking about it with the lawyer together but it still needs to be a posted meeting. Yeah, I guess I would just request at this point that given um, I think all three of you uh, board members are very important and also important to this process, um, that perhaps you could take the time to do that before any reappointment occurs. Thank you. Jeff Upton, and uh, just to address a Zoom comment here, uh, it's a little hard to hear in this room. And so I'm not sure exactly what was said, but I think I'm getting credit for something that I didn't say that I think somebody else said. So I just wanna correct that if, if, okay. that, if that's the case, if I heard correctly. Uh, the, other, the other thing is, is that Obviously, the board has some work to do here, whether you make the appointment tonight or not. At some point in time, it sounds like you want to uh, do a review of criteria and best practice practices for uh, appointment. I hope that's just not for the ZBA board. Are we going to do it for all boards across? Yes. 
It, it would have to be Jeff. And, it would be and a that's policy. why I was hoping. Yes. I just wanted to confirm that because I think if we're going to do for one, we need to do for all. No, it's to, it's to be consistent and transparent for all boards. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. But personnel board doesn't have any say over a winter decision, right? Yeah. No, thank you. Bruce? Uh, Bruce St. Peter's. Uh, we all know what this is all about tonight, but I just want to remind everybody, the town of Deerfield has a very precise code of conduct written for all town employees, which includes volunteers. So if anybody has a problem with any town employee, all they have to do is file a complaint. We don't have to. Now, the best management practice, I can understand that, but I don't think it should be rushed and done just because of, an, of a situation that has come up very recently. It needs to be discussed. And in the meantime, as I said, we have this written code of contact, conduct that every employee has to go through. You as, as the Board of Selectmen have the right to enforce that for every appointee that is there and every volunteer. So you, you already have a certain amount of, somebody said checks and balances right there. Thank we you. We wish it were a little more, um, had more teeth to it. So, uh, you know, re really. It's a hand slapper. It wakes people up. We hope. <laughs> that was why, that up. was the incentive of taking the webinar because it was, uh, you know, to try to make a code of conduct have some consequences. Okay. Um, we've been discussing this for about an hour and 20 minutes now. Yeah. Uh, we do have a motion on the floor and it's been seconded. Uh, all those in favor? Casey wanted to say something. What? Casey, did you want to say something? No. No, okay. I, I don't believe that there is a motion on the table. Yeah. Is there? What's there? Yep. Well, I read the names. I didn't. I don't think I made a motion yet. I read the names. Um, I I actually would like to make a motion to table them until the thirtieth, so that we maybe be able to discuss this policy. I, I think it's a, a, um, a little bit more time to discuss the policy before we make. A yes, I, I think it is important to discuss this policy because it it does have huge ramifications, and um, you know we just can't seem to have. I mean, I think we could schedule it. We we had a, uh, we did a lot of business tonight, so our our agenda for the thirtieth should have some time that we should be allowed to discuss it, and it would be productive enough, I think. Is there? Um... Is there time to meet before the thirtieth? I'm, I'm available. Case. I have a question about what you expect to see before a meeting to discuss a policy because I don't have anything to start with. To um, anyone that's interested, Casey. And that's why I was thinking, I don't think the 30th makes sense to me because I'd like a little bit more time to have a deeper discussion about that with public comment. And, you know, my biggest problem with this is that we were trying to rush something through before a deadline. And I think, I think it's too important to do that. I felt like it needed a lot. I mean, this has been really good discussion tonight. And I think everybody's been able to kind of speak to that, but I don't think we've been really able to speak to the issue Right. And of a policy and, and the pros and cons and, and the, you know, and I think there are some serious cons to it, to a policy um, like that. So, uh, you know, but I could be, you know, I think the whole idea is that you'd, you'd want to really have a robust, robust conversation about that, you know, for me, without uh, appointments hanging over my head, I think I'd rather, you know, well, I, I, I think Jennifer's point that there are alternates and there 
does not, uh, right now, there does not seem to be any business for the ZBA that we do have some time beyond the 30th. Mm -hmm. There isn't a rush. Um, I think it's important enough that we should consider it. And, you know, if you, both of you don't agree, I understand, but I think- No, I want people to have the voice. I yes. mean, right now we have the voice. Right. You know, we can right. make this appointment right now and move on and close the books and, and then have a discussion later on, or we can take the time to do it. I don't, I don't like to cede that authority to some other board to then tell me what they, what, what well, they, they could do. look at, they could I, look at I'm the slides. Have their yeah. Participation. Like I would like everybody in the audience at, at home and anyone else who has uh, some information about this, because, you know, you can only learn by listening. So, um, I just would like, you know, maybe uh, my, my concern is trying to rush it for the 30th. So if the appointments can, can don't have to happen the 30th, then we can have this discussion and then we decide either yay or nay against it or for it. The members won't be able to vote on anything after the 30th. Which members? The two that were up for reappointment. Dave Potter and, yep. and Adam Sapolsky. I, I don't, again, I don't think there's a rush at this point, but, um, you know, maybe something will come in. I don't know. The real issue though, too, is I don't really have a, you know, a serious um, infraction not to appoint the two members. I think they, you know, that, that's that's really the hard part of this is, is that, you know, separating, I really want to separate the policy out from the appointments. Yep. And that's, no, that's I, not been able to happen here. I know, and that's because of the timing and that's what is awkward. I agree with that. Well, I don't hear a second, so let's move on with the nomination. Well, I'll make a second that we, that we, if if we can pull a meeting off on the, before the thirtieth to have a discussion, and then decide between now and then, do we need to make those appointments on the thirtieth or not? Um, Casey. Carolyn, can I ask, I didn't hear everything you said before, but in terms of, of understanding what your expectation of us as staff in the office to turn this around, that's a very short deadline and we're at the last week of the fiscal year. So uh, I need to understand what the expectations are now because I need to see if that can fit into a work. My forward. expectations are not of the staff. My expectations are that Trevor and Dave will look at um, the slides and and call the presenter if they have any issues. That is like but if you're going to vote it. a policy, we need to have it written. Well, we have to discuss it first. So, I mean, we're talking about at least one meeting prior to the 30th, Casey, because we have to have time to discuss it. That seems to be the issue. They're just trying to find time to be able to have some discussion. And I'm just disappointed that we haven't been able to, you know, squeeze it in. I understand everybody is super busy. You can look at my book and I will be glad to show people that there's three or four meetings every day. And we didn't even get to touch base on the normalization of racial, equity in local government that I just attended on Monday. So we're not even gonna get into that today, but sure? <laughs> it was had some good points. Sure. And I sure. feel like um, it was from the League of National League of Cities that we, just, that we just joined because we were so impressed with the speaker. And mm -hmm. I have to say, we're getting our money's worth from their webinars. I, I think their, their trainings are fantastic. and. Mm -hmm. Um, uh, so I just wanted to share that, um, that, you know, a lot of it doesn't apply to us, but, um, the, the outline of what they are saying is, is very relevant. And I feel, um, 
that, that we have important things to discuss on that too. One more thing. I was gonna bring that up on July 11th when we had, when we talked about our priorities. Carolyn? Any further discussion? Okay, yes. Can you please send me the slides that you have so I, uh, so I can pass it around? Yes, I just have to go home um, because I can't get into my computer without the second authorization. So I'll, um, when I go home, I'll mail, uh, email it to you. Any further discussion? Uh, uh, yes, probably. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I know you probably want to move on. Um, well, this is on tabling it. What's that? This is on, there's a motion second is on the table. Right. To table it. To table the appointment? Yeah. Yeah. Until the 30th, which is where you want to be here. Oh, you yeah. won't. Well, that's all right. Um, were were you um, going to go away that week? Well, oh no, 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 sorry, no, I'm good. Because okay. we could move it. No, nope, um, that's fine. That's okay. Fine. Um, my, so my concern is that we won't have enough flushed out by the thirtieth. But I do uh, think it's right to at least give it a shot to talk on the 29th if you want to meet. I don't know if anyone else can or the. 30th or the uh, 28th um i don't know what dave's schedule is but i will give it a shot 28th is not good how about 29th? 20 29th we could do if you wanted to do it during the day or the evening i think it's available i'd have to double check our zoom accounts all right i mean I'll, I'll, i would allow that time to have a, uh, to start that discussion and to see okay. if it leads us in a place that is going to make a difference on making appointments on the 30th. Um, but I, you know. I'm okay for the 29th. That's my only Can free. Can you make that day? I have to soon. I'm out of town. Oh, okay. Are you out of town on the 30th too? Yes. Yeah, I'm back. Oh. I'm gone for two weeks. Oh. But he can Zoom. You're gonna Zoom anyway, right? Yeah. Okay. Okay, but so, I just think, you know, just this is ludicrous if you think we're really going to come up with a policy in no, a matter of three days. I didn't say that. I just said I think, you know, I, I would allow. Uh, I mean, even if Carolyn Smith's slides, we have to send those to our attorney and get a feedback from our attorney before we make a decision. I don't think we'll have a policy by the 30th. No. no. I just, I'm. I'm feel like we need to have a discussion. I That's think all the good. only thing that I was willing to do was, was to have a discussion on the 30th of what this policy would entail um, and then to see if it would affect my vote for the 30th to make appointments or not. I, I mean, I, th I feel like I owe that to, to you um, and, and to the public to, to listen uh, on the 29th and um, again, I don't know if it's going to make a difference in my vote, but I, I would at least attempt to listen. I mean, it's the, it's the right thing to do. And then if, um, if I don't think we're anywhere near a policy or we can't have them together in a short amount of time, then we'll just move forward with the appointments. And then we can still continue the discussion of the policy. It's not like, you know, that'll never happen. Um, you have to have that policy. I just, my, my problem is trying to do that before, before an appointment vote. I oh, know. Just poor timing. Casey has her hand raised. Go ahead, All right, here comes the echo, folks. Sorry. It's okay. The I was just wondering. I know Jennifer Remillard had said there didn't seem to be much on the agenda for zoning board of appeals. Jen, is there anything coming up? I thought Treehouse was coming back. Yes. Yeah, yes. 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 Treehouse yeah. is coming back. Um, we are having a meeting soon to go, you know, do our review of the applications. We haven't okay, gotten anything as the ZBA board via email from Sue regarding anything. No, not, not um, yet. So not I just yet. am it's, sharing it's, that information that I had at that time. Okay. Um, also, as a member of the steering committee, um, if you needed to have our Zoom account meeting on the Monday I think we could possibly do that meeting in person or change the date to make it easier for the select board. If I check with the other members, 
um, just because Jen has done, Jen Gannett has asked us to do that before. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. Okay, so um, I guess we have a motion on the table to table this to the 30th and then to have a meeting on the 30th to discuss whether a, um, what a, what a policy would look like and would it have any effect on it? On, um, and we're gonna try to make it a, a, a June 29th meeting. Yes. Okay. Assuming 6 p.m. Sure. Okay. Of course. On the third, well, are you going to make a decision? You can make a call. Can you please state your name and yeah, get it so to the microphone? Skip, Skip is asking if on the thirtieth we will we make it uh, make a decision on the appointments. Uh, I I think we have to. So um, I I think we would. And and I, and my issue is that um, I think that's important to do for one is to, is to have. Um, a decision made for, for the members and for the residents. And, but I also think it's important to listen to the feedback from uh, people and to um, give Carolyn time to relay the information, um, st start the conversation. Um, I don't think that's gonna be the end of the conversation. And I don't think we're gonna have a policy by the 30th, but I think it's important to start that conversation. And I'm sure that will roll on past the appointments, whether they're made or who we appoint, you know. So. Um, actually, well, that's up to the chair. Yeah, we've got a motion on the floor and it's been seconded and we've already had the discussion, so we're waiting on a vote. All those in favor of tabling? Aye, Chairman McDaniel. Aye, Carolyn Ness. Uh, those opposed? Dave Wolfram. That's 210. Motion to pass the table. Um, Casey, could you um, print out the code of conduct, our current code of conduct for all three of us so that we can mark up compared to the slides? And then we'll send her the slides? Yes. I can. I'd them. like to see the slides myself, though. Yeah. Just yes. Send them out. I'm going to send the slides when I get home. I, I just can't get into my email. What we also need to do is find out how many other communities in Massachusetts are, are using that as a policy. What, what are the other policies um, that are out there? What are they shaped like? Um, I'll work on that tomorrow, Trevor. Thank you, Jen. Really appreciate yeah. that. Yeah, I'll look at that and also see how many um, boards have gone away from the fact of having town, uh, you know, employees on boards. Right. So it's I'll, it's I'll, not I'll on look town boards. Jen, it's not on town boards, it's on town regulatory boards. Regulatory boards. And okay. the personnel sure. board. But we already have sure. a bylaw that does not allow town employees on the personnel committee. Yeah. So um, we don't have to worry about the personnel committee. But it, it is, this is regarding best practices of town employees being on regulatory boards and the personnel uh, board. Appointed to As special yes, employees? Appointed, because appointed, because you can. Yes, the town the town voters decide whether the you know a town employee is it's a problem or not if they are voted in or not. Sure, I'll look into board. that tomorrow. Yeah. Okay. So the next thing on our agenda, uh, you already talked about the old year for sewer project. Uh, no, I'm no. not. Casey the, has her hand raised again. Oh, go ahead, Casey. Casey. Sorry, you guys mentioned the appointments to Tritown earlier. And yes. there was one request for appointment. I handed Thank it to you, you Trevor. I, I make a motion that we appoint uh, Ken Cutterback to the Tritown Beach Committee. I'll, I'll second that motion and still encourage all the people who stepped up and wanted to serve. Um, you know, I, I, I private messaged everybody that kind of said something. If we, we need two more members and it's a great organization and I think we should have good representation for Deerfield, so please send in a letter saying you really want to serve and you know any skills you may bring, and that'd be great. Okay, and we'll discuss it in an open meeting. Any further discussion? No, all of those in favor, I Trevor McDaniel, I Carolyn Ness, I Dave Wolfer. So, uh, uh, the old Deerfield sewer 
projects. Yep. Um, so this is a little different than, uh, than all the other projects we were dealing with. Um, so uh, just to kind of bring everybody up to speed because we have a lot of people in the audience. So, um, you know, while our sewer plant is in poor shape, but is, is getting, getting repaired and, and rehabilitated, all of our collection systems, our pipes, all of that, we um, camera, uh, sent cameras to all of the pipes. Um, we finished Old Deerfield first, and we have, you know, roughly about $3 million worth of piping to do. And some of that is open cut replacement where they actually dig a trench and remove the whole pipe completely. And others, the pipes are kind of in bad shape, but you can send us kind of a sock through it and, you know, high pressure steam and it kind of creates a pipe inside the pipe. And um, so there are two kind of ways to do that. Um, based on, and we still are waiting for South Deerfield's information to come in, which is a lot bigger system, um, but I think is in better shape than old Deerfield. So when we found this out, we found one pipe that is the main collection pipe that takes all of the waste from old Deerfield and sends it out to the plant. It goes right through Deerfield Academy. Um, in speaking with Deerfield Academy about the operations of the plant and what plant and what we're gonna do going forward, this, this, this report came forward and we mentioned it to them. Um, and, and Deerfield Academy obviously has students there and all kinds of stuff happening during the year. They had offered um, if we could replace the work that goes from Albany Road down the hill by the, by the um, athletic fields, um, if we could do that during the summer where normally they have all kinds of things going on there, um, this year because of the COVID trans transition back to kind of normal, they, they didn't do any summer programs. So we have the stretch of a couple months where nothing's going on. We could get construction crews in there and replace that section. And, and Deerfield Academy offered to pay that, um, pay that bill. So they're, um, they're willing to pay the $270,000 uh, for us to do that section. We'll then have to kind of finish the rest out to the plant and then work on all the other stuff that needs to happen going up Pine Nook Road up to Eagle Brook is in really bad shape. And there's a couple other sections that are um, really in, in red, kind of red shape that need to get to get done. But this project, we, we move forward on a fast track to try and get this done while the students are gone and because they're paying for it. Um, so bids went out, they came back. Um, we have recommendations from our engineers to um, to award the bid. So I'll just kind of read this. It's because again, it's an open cut and a kind of a sleeve system. There are two different bids that went out. Um, bids were received and opened uh, for the old Deerfield sewer rehabilitation phase one project at the Deerfield Town Hall uh, at 1 p.m. on Thursday, June 10th. Two bids were received and are summarized in the table below. Uh, so Precision Trenchless LLC for 49,004. $178 was the low bid. The second bid was National Water Main Cleaning Company and they were uh, $58,600. So the bid submitted uh, by the parent low bidder Precision Trenchless LLC at Schenectady, New York was um, in conformance with the requirements of the bidding documents uh, and the attachments uh, were in order. We believe that Precision Trenchless LLC is sufficiently qualified to perform this work. Reference checks performed were positive in nature. We therefore recommend the town of Deerfield um, conditionally award um, the old Deerfield sewer rehabilitation phase one project to Precision Trenchless LLC for the total bid in the amount of $49,400. $78 contingent upon receipt and review of the necessary bonds and insurance uh, certificates. If authorized by Deerfield Select Board, we will prepare and issue a notice of conditional acceptance of the bid, the Precision Trenchless LLC. So I would make that motion to award that bid. And I will second that. Thank you. Any further discussion? Nope. Hearing none, all those in favor? I, Trevor McDaniel. I, Carolyn Ness. I, Dave Wolfer. Then secondly, uh, there is a second bid. So uh, bids were received and open old Deerfield sewer uh, replacement phase one project in Deerfield Town Hall, 1 p.m. Thursday, June 10th. One bid was received and summarized in the table below. A detailed bid summary is attached. Uh, Ludlow Construction Company, Inc. for $96,150. 
Uh, the bid was submitted by the low, uh, low bidder, Ludlow Construction Inc. Uh, Company Inc. of Ludlow, Massachusetts was in conformance with the requirements of the bidding documents uh, were in order. We believe that Ludlow Construction Company is sufficiently qualified to perform this work. Our staff is familiar with and has worked with Ludlow Construction on several occasions. They are um, a well-known Western Mass contractor for performing this type of work. We therefore recommend that the town of Deerfield conditionally award the Old Deerfield Sewer Replacement Phase One project to old, uh, Ludlow Construction Company, Inc. for the total bid in the amount of $96,150 contingent upon receipt and review of the necessary bonds and insurance certificates. Um, if authorized by the Deerfield Select Board, we will prepare and issue a notice of conditional acceptance of bid to the uh, letter to the Ludlow Construction Company, Inc. So I'll make that motion. And I'll second that. Any I, further sure. discussion? Yeah. Sure. sure you can. Uh, Jennifer Ram Ramillard, Conway Street. Um, while I understand it's in our financial interest to accept the lowest bids uh, projected and some research has been done on the background of these companies. My concern is as in um, the issue with the culvert on Kelleher Drive, what ramifications uh, does the town have if there's if these deadlines are not followed through with? Um, I believe there was some concerns with the Kelleher project. Obviously we had rain and other winter things that needed to be done within the timeline we got the grant for, from, the, um, from the state. But um, my concern is, is this project going to be finished before the students come back within yes. the timely fashion? Yes. And what, what, um, what does the town have to hold, you know, these businesses accountable to get that done within those few months? Because as we know, rain happens and all sorts of things that can occur, especially on that stretch of road, it being um, an older area and you don't know what you may en encounter. We've done borings and all that stuff, so they 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 know they know what they're going to encounter now. But they um, but we do have bonds, so you know you you have contingencies in bonds. So if the if if the project doesn't isn't get for something goes wrong and these companies aren't continuing to do the work, you you bring in another company to finish it and they pay the bill. Okay, I just want to make sure because mm -hmm. with the timeline you're discussing for that project, yep. I just want to make Very sure tight. that we're not going to you know face ramifications sure. as a community. No, no, so. it's no, a good no. question and it it is really a struggle when you oh, um, have a contractor that does not fulfill its obligations. Great. Thank you. Yep. Thank yep. you. Okay, all those in favor? I Trevor McDaniel. I Carolyn Ness. I Dave Wolfson. Thank you all very much. Um, I want to make sure that we address the sound system. Can we vote yes. on that? Yes. Is, well, uh, is that up under? I don't have is, that under un listed anymore. Unanticipated audio visual hybrid meetings. Oh, I don't have that on my. Oh, I know it's uh, related to. I think. Oh. Yeah. Oh, okay. Okay. Uh, the next thing on the agenda is the uh, mail. Any mail, Casey? We have to review. Mm -hmm. If there is no mail in your packet, you do not have anything to review. And I okay. keep in mind, I literally nope. walked in the door from my vacation this. I don't have any mail. So thank Jennifer. Okay. Uh, town administrator's report. That was vacation. Mostly we're getting towards the end of the fiscal year. So what that entails, there's been a lot of work around the MVP grant administration, bills wrapping up the fiscal year. We have had some personnel matters that have taken up a lot of my time in the past few days. And we also have the beginnings of the transfers that have to be done, as well as some of those other clo book closure administrative items. So right now it's pretty busy. And so ha adding to the workflow is going to be difficult for us in here because it is really a mad scramble to get to the end of the fiscal year, not just for our office, but for the entire municipal offices and police department. There's a lot to. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Um, so uh, audio visual hybrid. So I could just hit on this a little bit. So we, we were all trying to figure out like, when COVID's over, how do you conduct a meeting again with people in the audience? Um, and, and you know, it kind of ended and there was no provision for continuing with Zoom, but uh, the legislature worked pretty hard and the governor had signed it to continue it till April, I think, till 2022. 22. Yeah. yeah. 
So we've got until next April to kind of figure out, you know, will something get continued or, or not? But in the meantime, um, you know, we had to figure out before when we were doing remote meetings, it was pretty easy. We could all just do Zoom and we didn't have to worry about anybody in the audience and all the audio that goes along with that. So we've been working, FCAT's been great. Uh, uh, Chris Collins and uh, John, and I want to give a shout out to Kevin Murphy over at the high school. He's been coming over and I want to shout out to Larry Berger, who's a resident of town and just a super awesome guy. And he, he came over, you know, for free. He's a sound technician and he, he gave us some ideas on what we could do because ever since I got involved with town government, nobody can hear in the back room and the whole room was designed like we're supposed to be sitting over there. So all the speakers are backwards and, um, and, and no one can ever really hear. And we finally have a bigger screen so people can see, but it's, it's been an issue. So we do have some capital in the uh, FCAT capital um, uh, that we could spend on audio and visual. Um, and to be able to, to kind of do a hybrid meeting where residents at home can hear what people are saying right now, you can't, you know, if you're at home, you can't really hear what somebody's saying in the back room. So the idea is to purchase a 16 channel kind of splicer. So it takes all the mics from here um, and the mics in the room, mics standing up out there, all puts them into a mixer that gets uh, sent out to Zoom. Um, so everybody at home can hear what everybody in the audience is saying. And then everybody in the audience can hear what everyone at home is saying, and then we can all hear. But then we also have like equalizers coming so that you don't have all the feedback and that mm, it, it gets really difficult when, you know, we're trying to speak and then there's, you know, if I turn this on, there's all kinds of feedback. So we've got all that kind of figured out with Larry's help and with Chris's help and Kevin. So the idea is to, I think we had a list here, um, and, and we also want to make this mobile. So we're going to have a cart with drawers that'll have the equalizer stand up speakers. So, you know, I think uh, we've had that makes sense. a gentleman from uh, one of the students that graduated Frontier a couple of years ago when he puts on a town meeting or something, and he's got these big speakers and everybody can hear. So we think it, it's worth the capital to make sure that people can participate in democracy. So we think some speakers, uh, the 16 channel mixer, the cart to fit everything on and some better mics that we can have around the area. Some of these are on their way out, but, um, and then some, just some cables and stuff. And that came up to about just under 4,000, like 39, six, uh, 30, uh, $3,967.24. Um, there is actually a, a $159 video capture card, which I think you purchased already, but we would still reimburse, we have that here, and that's how we're able to run that camera through that and send it out to Zoom. So, you know, we still have to pay back for that. So um, the idea is to purchase this stuff. Uh, FCAT will purchase it. We use the capital to pay FCAT back, so. I, I think I would be more comfortable if we just rounded it up to 4,500. Just to cover. Yeah, in case there's another video card or whatever. I mean, it's fine. And then whatever I, I don't feel comfortable just use. saying 30. We need to be able to purchase whatever we need mm -hmm. to purchase. So, and the money is in the account. So I would make a motion to um, support $4,500 towards um, improving the sound here in the town hall. I'll second that motion. Okay. Um, discussion. Casey, today you mentioned something about a system called Orbit or something like that. True. There is another system that I was informed about by my colleagues in Waitley and Sunderland, and it's called an OWL system. I was going to look into it, but I hadn't had a chance to finish looking, in it, looking into it today. It is, it's more of a one-piece system, so I would really want you know, other folks to look at that. It's not as expensive, but then again, we have, different, we have a different situation here in the town hall. It may be worthwhile considering it for smaller rooms. I think we need to look at it, but do you think it, we should um, we should add in a couple thousand dollars and then uh, and then if we don't use it, you know, if we're not setting up something in like the conference room, then it will just revert back to the capital uh, account. I would say it's I would say about twenty five hundred just to be safe. All and right, based on so what I just looked at, I, I'm going to withdraw my um, motion and make a new motion. 
Um, so that's what we're going to get away from. Get away, where that's coming from. But anyways, um, that's Skip having a heart attack, and I'm <laughs> appropriating more money than than has than we were uh, asked. Here, Carolyn, so I, can you can you repeat, ahead, Je Jennifer? Can you just repeat that because there was some. I, I withdrew my original motion and I'm making a new motion for $7,500 um, to buy equipment to upgrade um, the audio here in the town hall. I'll second that motion for discussion. The one thing I'll say is I think what Casey was talking about is it's an item that kind of sits here and does a 360 camera. And I think that that might be a really good idea to capture everybody in the room at the same time instead of that. Because we also, what I was going to say is we also have been talking about getting a dedicated camera for here. We use FCATs and they take that mobily. But we should, the whole idea of this was to also have a mobile meeting. So if we were going to have a meeting outside on the common to discuss something or an event or a library discussion or a senior center thing or something out there, you can take this all on the go as long as you have some power to it. Um, so that that was, you know, I think we can still discuss what that final audio or the visual item can be. But Jeff had a question too. So. I think that's a great idea. Really appreciate that. I think a lot of people <laughs> are going to really, uh, really appreciate it because it's hard to hear in the room and even doing the Zoom meetings sometimes very difficult but uh, i just wanted to ask why we're we're updating all this are we going to also consider the electronic voting conway well, has done that and point. orange just did that I and think from what should. i understand it was pretty successful i think we should i know kip was uh kip was a, a proponent of that early on and i i remember wendy was like you know not really sure what's this thing right. and we, we just weren't sure and i think uh, at the time Dan Graves kind of just said, well, not right now, but I do think it's worth doing. I know my mom attended the Green, the uh, Conway meeting and, and felt it worked very, very well. I think, Kip, you know, he, he really explained it, did a show and tell for us. I thought it, you know, it was a good idea. Um, you know, I think it's worth kind of having that discussion, but I think it's separate. Um, and yes, but we, we definitely, I don't know what that cost was, but you know, whether it comes through capital or, or we just have a discussion. It has to go about. through capital improvement. Right. So, yeah, no, I, it's good. Okay. This and, is, this is. After this, at some point in time, could you just list the regulatory boards? Yes. So people will know which yes. boards we're talking about. Sure. So, okay. okay, sure. Any further discussion? Skip not chiming in when. Carolyn added 2,500 to 4,500 and came up with 7,500. I, I, I just bumped it again. <laughs> it's my math. Well, we're make All sure those in favor. Hi, Trevor McDaniel. Hi, Carolyn Ness. Hi, Dave Wolfram. I just don't want to have to go back and vote another number. Pair it back. Is yeah. At least we can. Yes. Great. This way, it'll just, whatever we don't use, will go back into the account. Okay. Uh, next thing on it, Jack. You already said your piece, right? Yes. Okay. So upcoming meetings. Um, Casey hasn't listed the July 11th meeting. We um, That's at 2 p.m. I see that's not listed here, Kate, Casey. This Sunday, July 11th. That's our priority meeting? Oh, thank no, you. No, you guys decided that, and I went away on vacation Thursday morning. Oh, right. <laughs> Good for you. <laughs> I'm glad you did. Wait, 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 wait. A Sunday, what, two, two, a Sunday meeting? Uh, no, it's, it, it is a Sunday meeting at uh, two uh, o'clock two two to discuss priorities. It's a, um, just priorities. Just a relaxing meeting on a Sunday afternoon. Everyone's <laughs> welcome to come and we're just going to talk about our priorities for the next yep. year. Is it, is it on Zoom? Sure. Uh, yeah, it can yes. be. Can be anything you need. Yep. More. We'll talk tomorrow, better. Jennifer. Okay. okay. Upcoming meetings. So we got the thirtieth, July eleventh, and the 29th. The twenty ninth. The thirtieth. Working on that. Um. 
Yeah, it was the 29th, the 30th, uh, the 14th, the 11th, 28th. Okay. Don't we have July 1st? We may, in fact, need to have one on July 1st, Jennifer. I, that's not completely scheduled yet, so I will advise the board if we need to schedule. Right. Um, this is July, July. so we're going to have a meeting on the 30th and July 1st? 29th, the 30th. It's possible. It's not, it's not set in stone yet, Carolyn. Okay. 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 I've seen your housing at 7, so... To yep. On the 30th, right? Senior housing on the 30th? No, senior housing is on July 1st at 7. No, but aren't they giving us a presentation on the 30th, Carol? Oh, I, I don't know. There's Lily. <laughs> is Lily our Lily has her. <laughs> I missed last week's meeting. No, we actually um, asked to be put on the schedule a couple of weeks ago because we want to present to the select board. Um, what we have been finding out about town property and oh, um, uncovering over 200 acres of town property that uh, all in one spot. I no. wish. <laughs> <laughs> no, but there's large parcels like 50 acres and stuff right. like that. So yeah. um, we wanted to present that to you all in uh, some sort of a format that will be useful and uh, give you some, you know, share with you some of the thoughts that we've had around how it could help senior housing, but it can definitely help the town. Um, yep. And then to discuss with you, we want to do a check in with you on the vision for senior housing, the different criteria that we're looking at and just make, do a check in, you know, make yep. sure we're all going down the same. We've been meeting every week, every yeah. week. A few Thank months you. now. Yep. Okay. Bruce? Okay, just a couple of comments. Uh, one, I understand we've been designated one of these ARP communities, and everybody. Oh, what community? An ARP, ARP community. Oh, oh, yes. AARP ARP. community. Yeah. Oh, AARP. Oh, yes. Than the ARPA. Uh, yes, the AARP community. <laughs> and I see some postings on Facebook. Uh, however, I would like to acknowledge the person that started that a couple of years ago, which was Lisa White. Yeah. And uh, she received no recognition oh no that's not true bruce we we thanked her uh, i'm talking about on the facebook page oh so, oh okay, okay. Yep. uh for people that did not yes. see that and yep. i would also like to uh as much as i've seen uh i'd like to sincerely thank all the volunteers for the senior center picnic and especially sue corey who was yep. overlooked tremendously as far as i'm concerned yep. and so i would like to uh, express my sincere thanks to those People. Thank you. Thank yes, you. Was it great. was it was a lovely picnic, Bruce, yeah. and it was lo actually really lovely to talk to you. I told you I really day. enjoyed it. Yes. Yeah, it was good it, to see you. It was yep. it was nice. Thank yeah. you. Very nice. Good to see your people together again. Yes. Okay. Now we'll hear your motion. Oh, motion to adjourn. I will second that. Okay. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Aye, Trevor McDaniel. Aye, Aye. Carolyn Ness. Aye, Dave Wolf. Thank you all for coming.